So I was doing my usual browse around finance YouTube, have a little look around what other people are making, look at some of their most popular videos and see what people are talking about. And you'd be amazed how much quite bad information there is out there, especially around some of the most basic concepts in this industry, especially on the topic of what are index funds, mutual funds and ETFs and some of the differences that we need to talk about between them. And then I realized that millions of people potentially have now been taught weird and strange, different conflicting things about what these things are. And they're quite a basic concept to understand as investors, especially beginners, if you're just going to get started and you really need to understand some of the basics. So I wanted to make a really quick video to explain firstly what they actually are, the differences between them, and then when you as an investor might want to pick between them. So let's get started. First up, it's a bit of a trick question. There's not three categories in this sector. Really, we're only talking about two different categories, essentially either mutual funds or ETFs. Both of them fall into the overall category that can be index funds. And remember, when we talk about index funds, the clue is in the name. So it can be based essentially on any kind of index. An index can be anything from the FTSE 100 here in the UK, the S&P 500 in America. It could be anything from emerging markets, companies who work in a certain country, companies who work in a sector, companies even maybe in the electric vehicle space, for example. All of these things are indexes. Almost every company can be put into a different index, depending on maybe how big it is, what sector it works in, what country it works in. For example, a good idea of an index here in the UK might be the UK Premier League for football. And every single team on that is part of the index, which is the Premier League. I must have missed that. Red card. But here's where things get a little bit more complicated, as I hinted at before. So an index fund can either be a mutual fund or it can be an ETF or an exchange traded fund. Both of these things can be an index fund. And just to make things a little bit more complicated, but it will all make sense soon, is that also an ETF and a mutual fund can also not be an index fund and they can be made up of totally separate companies which have no follow of an index as well, but we'll get into that. So I think it'll help if we just draw this out and visualize this. So let me do this for you now. Let's imagine a big circle and anything inside of it, we're gonna call an index fund. Then inside this circle, we've got both ETFs, so that stands for exchange traded funds, and then another circle for mutual funds. So each of these types of funds, as you can see by this diagram, can be an index fund. Now, we'll cover off one of the final parts, which of course, lots of YouTube finance get wrong. So if we continue with this diagram, both ETFs and mutual funds can also be broken down a step further some can be actively managed and some can be passively managed. So if you want a good example of one, an ETF that's pretty popular and famous and actively managed, you'd be looking at ARK-K by ARK Innovation. Those are the ones managed by Kathy Wood and her team. On the passive side, in the USA, a really famous index fund ETF is one known as the SPY, which tracks the S&P 500, SPY. And an example in the UK might be VUSA, which is a Vanguard fund, which tracks passively the S&P 500. So that's the really high level sorted, but there are a few other differences too. So let's cover them off and then you can work out which one you might want to include in your portfolio. If you're enjoying the video so far, please consider dropping me a big fat like and a comment too. It really helps out small channels like mine. But anyway, let's get back into it. First things first, you're gonna have two types of management. You're either gonna have actively managed or passively managed. Those that are passively managed and fall into the index fund category are going to try and track as closely as they can the index they follow. Those that are actively managed may have their own goal and most of them are going to try and beat a market and try and beat a certain index as well. But then of course, as the name suggests, they will have a team of people, analysts and managers who are going to individually select the stocks based on their own preferences and not based on the specific index they're talking about. Second up, there's an interesting thing we need to talk about pricing. So mutual funds will be priced once a day at the end of the day. So all of the orders that are submitted for a mutual fund will come together, it'll be priced up and worked out how much that mutual fund's actually worth and then the order will go through on that day. And that contrasts with the ETF side, which the clue is in the name on this one, an exchange traded fund, means that this one's actually traded on the stock market just like any other company. So you can be bought and sold throughout the day at any time the market's open. And a second point in pricing that you might want to look at is that ETFs, of course, just like any other company, are going to be priced per share. Whereas a mutual fund, you can put in as much or as little as you like, as long as it meets some of the minimum criteria of that mutual fund. So for example, if you wanted to invest a hundred or a thousand, and that can be pounds or dollars into a mutual fund, for example, the minimum might be a hundred pounds monthly or 500 pounds or $500 monthly and you'll get exactly $500 worth of that investment. But when we compare that to ETFs, it will have to be divided by the amount per share. So for example, if I put $100 into an ETF, 
that's $45 or £45 per share, I'm only going to get two of those shares and I'm going to have $10 or £10, which will be left on the side. Now, there may be select brokers who allow you to get uh, fractional shares of that ETF, but otherwise you may have some money left. And here's one of the most important points, again, talking about money and talking about costs. It's the ongoing costs of these investments. And one of the most important factors is really going to be whether it's actively managed or passively managed. Both ETF or a mutual fund that's passively managed are going to have significantly lower fees than those that are actively managed. One more thing to state on this is that mutual funds do tend to have some hidden costs which aren't necessarily made up front to investors. For example, if I go on the Vanguard website here and look at their list of funds, I'll actually be able to see that there's a few hidden costs they don't make up front, which could include all of the individual trading costs made up inside of that fund that aren't advertised on the website outside. Although also saying that, that doesn't mean ETFs are immune. There can be a difference between the bid ask spread as well. And this will depend on the broker you're using and how much liquidity there is available for that ETF. So just be aware of those different hidden fees. Now, finally, we do need to talk tax. Well, this will depend entirely on your own different tax rules in your country and whether your investment is in a tax-free account, for example, here in the UK with a stocks and shares ISA, or maybe in the States with a Roth IRA or even a 401k plan. Whatever you've got it in, you do need to be aware of the certain tax elements of these kinds of investments. On the whole, generally, it's accepted that an ETF may be a more tax efficient option as from some mutual funds, you can get passed on some costs as they buy and sell into their portfolio. But I'm not going to go into too much more detail on that one, but please look into it. It depends on your jurisdiction. So when would you actually want to buy each one and how would you make a decision depending on what kind of investor you are? Well, I think a lot of it comes down to what kind of investor you are whether you're somebody who wants to invest monthly, for example, in the same lump sum, or whether you're maybe a bit more of a trader jumping in and out. And a big second thing you need to consider really is whether we're going to talk about a passive fund or an active fund. As we've mentioned before, those passive ones can be a mutual fund or you can have a passive ETF as well, which are going to be significantly lower cost versus the actively managed ones. Just remember that in the long term, actively managed funds absolutely suck and they lose about 90% of the times over 10 to 20 year periods. So you're going to find an active fund. You better hope it's the one that's going to beat the market. Also, another factor, really, it depends what broker you're using and what platform. Some platforms might only have ETFs because they're traded on the stock market, whereas other brokers may only offer you mutual funds, for example. So this one might even depend what broker you use. And then the final point will be that ETFs potentially can be slightly cheaper because of the way they're costed. Like I said, mutual funds can have some hidden costs in, but you always need to make sure you do all of your own research and check deeply in this one. For example, if I pop up on screen now and we have a look at VU, which is a popular Vanguard fund in the USA, which we can't buy in the UK that tracks the S&P 500, we can see here that the ongoing cost for this is 0.03%, whereas in the UK, our closest equivalent is VUSA, which I actually own myself, which is an S&P 500, again, ETF tracking fund, index fund, and these fees are 0.06%. So we get charged nearly twice as much but it's still a lot less than it used to be many, many years ago, way before I got investing. So bottom line is be super careful out there. There are thousands and thousands of ETFs and mutual funds to choose from that cover every single sector. Ultimately, bottom line is that index funds, whether it's an ETF or a mutual fund that are passively managed, that track an index, have won most of the time in the long run. So be super careful but fill your boots, buy whatever you want, do your own research and make sure that you look after yourself. If you do want to get started investing and learn some of the basics, especially if you're from the UK, please check out this next video, which I'll put on screen now. This is my ultimate beginner's guide for investing starting in 2022. Alternatively, feel free to check out also all of my portfolio updates, which I will pop up on screen now as well. If something you want to follow all of my investments across Vanguard, Hargreaves, Lansdowne, free trade, etc. I've got quite a few different portfolios to give you some inspiration. I'll make sure to leave those linked in the description below. Anyway, happy investing.